Excuse me, the dog. Hi, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the dot beautiful postcard perfect day here in the end times. Well, we have a sick little dog. Sick little dog. Uh, it is Friday, August 12th, 2022. I want to wish a happy birthday to my dear sweet ex-wife. Uh, I have no idea if that woman is dead or alive here on August 12th, 2022. Happy number 62, darling, wherever you are. And uh, so anyway, let's just hope the heading down into the 40s tonight. Let's just hope that the weather for the upcoming Doomer Shindig is going to be half this gorgeous. So it sounds like this party is uh, spreading out, by the way. So anyone wanting to join us uh, at the Doomer Shindig, it's now going to actually start on Thursday, September 15th. So we're going to be going Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. We have some scheduling conflicts where, you know, uh, so I want to make sure everyone, so uh, sounds like Jennifer Hines is now signed up. So Jennifer and Sandy will be arriving on Thursday night. So if you want to visit with those two characters, uh, come on and see us. And someone who, a uh, one of our tribes members who I would absolutely love to show up Probably we're not going to talk her into it, but you never can tell. We're going to go down to the great state of Texas today to hear from our old friend Cynthia Conaway. I, Cynthia hasn't been real talkative uh, recently on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but good Lord, I set off a, uh, a, I set off a rant with Cindy with the why are spineless Americans so terrified of stepping one inch out of their comfort zones. And uh, <laughs> Sister Cynthia from the great state of Texas had this to say, good Lord girl, so I'm just going to turn over today's rant or bloviation. I think she, uh, this is officially termed a bloviation. Take it away, Cynthia, and they tell us why are spineless Americans so terrified of stepping one inch out of their comfort zones? <clears throat> Americans are terrified of everything in general, and those who aren't apparently are seen as naive. The privileged comfort zones Merkin's fear stepping out of are, as far as I can tell, of a material nature only, and most have not one goddamned clue they're being cheated out of life. It's as tragic as tragedy gets. And, you know, I noticed, uh, and I do want to thank uh, uh, Brother W.R.W. W. for his long response, uh, but I know what she's pointing out, that so many items on his list, such as, is the place air-conditioned, uh, is your room furnished? What, what, what room isn't furnished? You know, anyway, you know, is it air conditioned? Is it furnished? Uh, is there a private bathroom? Uh, can you walk to a restaurant? These are not safety concerns. It has nothing to do with being, with any threat of personal safety. It's spoiled, pampered, little limp dick, uh, fucking Americans absolutely terrified. Absolutely fucking terrified that they're going to have to spend one fucking night of their lives without a fucking air conditioner or uh, they might have to share a bathroom with somebody else. 
uh, which is exactly for people coming to this party, for anybody uh, who does not want to share a bathroom with anybody. This, uh, well, I guess there's 14 acres of woods if you don't want to share a fucking bathroom or, or bring your own five-gallon bucket is what I would recommend, is bring your own bucket. This is a BYOB meetup, bring your own bucket. But this is what Cindy's talking about. Uh, it, it has, it, well, it, it does have being terrified, you, you, you know, of getting shot or whatever. But this is what people, the vast majority of these little privileged snowflakes, and, and you know, and, and the fact that doomers, uh, you know, this is, um, th that comment from WRW, which I didn't really point out yesterday, has, has as much to do with what the collapse of global industrial civilization is going to look like. Well, when, when these fucking little pansies, the, the thought of a night without an AC uh, throws, uh, they, they will not book a, you know, you heard the comment. Okay, this is showing even doomers, even doomers are, are, are not uh, prepared for what the hell. Little dog, I need to set you over in your own chair. I, I don't know if my little doomer dog is ready for the, the Indian food diet after uh, with his sensitive stomach. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm on my own rant. Uh, let's get back to Cindy's rant. Where were you, darling? Uh, the privileged comfort zones, Merkins, spelled M-U-R-K-I-N-S, fear stepping out of, are as far as I can tell of a material nature only, and most have not one goddamn clue. They are being cheated out of life. It's as tragic as tragedy gets. All right. Merkins. Merkins are propagandized all to hell courtesy of a culture, society, and media permeated through and through with terror. Everything is scary and getting scarier. If... When you walk out your front door, you're not sufficiently petrified of, among other things, being late to work, losing business, getting fired, getting sued or audited, being late on your rent or mortgage, contacting or contracting some disease. Do you think so? What was the latest one in the mainstream media yesterday that they were coming up with? Uh, obviously, you know, catching some, uh, some cootie, getting injured, being stopped by cops, being robbed, see above, meaning being stopped by cops. And I would say my fear of of the cops in this country is about even with my fear of the robbers. I have an equal amount of fear, cops or robbers. I put them in the same boat as, as far as instilling fear in me. Alright, getting carjacked, being assaulted, being raped, being accused of racism, being broke or in debt, dealing with the homeless, unexpected expenses, can you say a $341 tooth pulling, a loved one getting hurt, and for one or two people on the planet, ecosystem collapse and the collapse of civilization. Uh, as they say, this is this this strikes fear into what percentage of Americans 
when they walk out their front door in the morning are terrified of ecosystem collapse or the collapse of civilization. Getting nuked, a terrorist attack, dying by mass shooters, etc. And of course this list would go on and on. The media will reliably be there bullhorning its litany of new new and old things you should be afraid of registered trademark to make sure you are sufficiently f informed and aware i.e. threatened yes the media will reliably be there bullhorning to make sure you are sufficiently threatened Newer, but no less insidious, is the attack on human connections, common sense, and reason that has been underway in the U.S. for about a decade now. I mean, if Americans, I guess not Merkins, if Americans were not evacuating their bowels into their Levi's before, they are increasingly doing it now, considering they're doing it alone without the support of family, friends, or a community. <clears throat> if there is anything the media has gotten correct of late, it is that the U.S. in particular suffers from an epidemic of loneliness and deep political and social divisions driven by the social media echo chamber cultivated silos we have been not so accidentally filtered into. The better for our Silicon Valley overlords to predict and keep tabs on trends in thought and potential action among we and the various squabbling Merkins surf factions. Yes, this polarization and atomization coincided with the successful emasculation of U.S. society, i.e. labeling all things normal and healthy and male, I guess male things, toxic, etc., and the disingenuous power grab of postmodern critical theory cultists, with their deliberate focus and magnification on the few, a small fraction really, but mostly made up grievances or remnants of disparity in matters narcissistically involving identity, i.e. tiresome gender, race, ability, and sexual orientation, etc. Crap. Uh, this I just want to interject here about this critical race theory. I am... Uh, well, no, she didn't have the word race in here. She said, just the postmodern critical theory cultist. Uh, anyway, I, I don't know if she left the word race out, or, or I guess everything is critical theory now. I just wanted to say, to this day, I have no clue what critical race theory is. Okay, no fucking clue what critical race theory is. I have no clue. I have no desire to find out. I'm going to take a wild hambone hunch that critical race theory will do nothing but make the races more inflamed against each other than they were before the term was ever invented. If we did not already have enough, you know, redneck, uh, Trump-tard racist in America, I want to thank the little limp-dick lefty 
critical race theory proponents, my guess, most of whom are white, uh, for doing more to harm race relations in this country than, uh, good God, uh, than the Emmett Till trial. Anyway, enough of critical race theory or whatever critical theory we're talking about. Back to Cindy. All that was once obvious, broadly accepted, and understood as healthy and normal was suddenly flipped upside down. And woe to those who do not bow at the altar of woke. The altar of woke, lest they be marked a supremacist, racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe, and or transphobe, unclean, outcast. Combined with all the other crazy making, this is more or less the cherry on top of the alienation cake icing. Judging by the drop in the US, in U.S. life expectancy, the explosion in deaths of despair, including suicides, alcohol, drug, and food overdoses, heartbreak, etc., and the fact that fentanyl overdose is the number one leading cause of death for 18 to 45 years old, I would say it is hopeless to ask why Americans are so spineless and almost non sequitur to imply a privileged comfort zone has a role in any reluctance to participate in what one would consider life. Merkins are a bunch of trampled mushrooms, fed shit, and kept in the dark. <laughs> there you go. I think we found the title to this rant. Merkins are a bunch of trampled mushrooms, fed shit, and kept in the dark. Can't find a reason to get out of bed, much less do something dangerous like travel across state lines or insanity risk venturing into another country. God damn it, what happened here? This is one of these touch screens. Uh, oh shit. This is one of these uh, touch screens. Anyway, where were we? Okay, I touched the screen. Can't find a reason to get out of bed. <clears throat> what in the hell is going on? I'm not going to touch you, you goddamn screen. Can't find a reason to get out of bed, much less do something dangerous like touch your own fucking computer screen like travel across state lines or insanity risk venturing into another country without every detail scheduled, accommodated, and controlled for ever. Yep, wouldn't it be nice if we could just, if we could just schedule, accommodate, and control every single detail of our lives, every detail, leave nothing to chance. Before you walk out that door, WRW will tell you, before you walk out your fucking front door, you want to have every single aspect of your life, that day, that week, the rest of your life, you want nailed down under your control. You want no margin of error in your life. It's a jungle out there. Be prepared. I don't know, Hambone. This is all stuff I am about 100%, 110% sure you and the gallant tribe already knew 
Sorry for this long-winded verbal masturbation ejaculation of stuff. That is probably obvious for most. On the subject of letting go of the bank, we Merkins don't seem as can-do-ish as we once were. Feels like agency along with independence, critical thinking, and masculinity has been conditioned the hell out of the last couple of generations, leaving most Gen Xers and above scratching our heads. Our heads or their heads. Traveling did not used to seem so risky, at least. Limp dickishness. I love that word. Limp dickishness. I think she might have meant limp dickedness. Is it limp dickishness or is it limp dickedness? Anyway, limp dickishness coupled with the U.S. media's portrayal of non-EU and non-Anglo-Oceana countries as crime, disease, terrorism, and or corruption-ridden hellholes makes it unsurprising that no one is willing to venture out of their safe spaces if they only knew. One last anecdote, if you can tolerate it, and then I will finally shut up. One of the most bizarre and sad phenomena I witnessed while living or stationed in different countries overseas was the cloistered behavior some U.S. military families exhibited. There were inevitably more than a handful of U.S. families stationed at any given airbase in any given foreign country, friendly ones, in fact, that deliberately confined themselves to life within the tiny confines of the U.S. base and base housing. These families had been given three or even four year opportunities to freely explore a completely different culture, language, and country, but they chose to exist as if nothing was going on the, beyond the walls of the limited U.S. community. These were invariably the families who mocked locals, people they refused to engage, the ones who loudly proclaimed they could not wait to get back to the world registered trademark that they desperately missed. Taco Bell and Sonic Burger, and even lamented being deprived of U.S. TV commercials. This was a minority of genuinely uncurious families who carried on as if they were enduring a three to four year hardship in exile rather than being given a chance to check out fascinating countries and peoples with higher standards of living and quality of life in many cases than whatever cardboard strip mall shithole U.S. backwaters they likely hailed from. <coughs> I hope Sancho is given a green light health-wise for Auroville, India adventure. Hambone. I don't know whether he would be given that green light today. If not, and Austin is your disappointing winter destination, I will not let the chance escape me again to take you out for margaritas. If you will give this clueless moron flake another chance. In any case, and regardless of where the universe directs you and Sancho Hambone, Godspeed, blovation complete, blovation complete, love, Cindy, and uh, as I told Cindy, I always suspected you were a closet bloviator, yep, 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 <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, we're actually getting the roof up on the uh, on the new tiny house, which definitely should be ready for the uh, upcoming Doomer meetup, the new tiny Taj, I'm calling it. So come see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm and check out the newest edition. Get out there and bloviate while you still can. Bye, guys.